Okay, Daryl. Hey, congratulations on your film, uh, How It Ends. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Not a problem. I I I thoroughly enjoyed it when the first time I watched it at the Sundance Film Festival. So watching it again was was an absolute delight. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Not a problem. So uh, so tell us um, how this film was originated with uh, Zoe Lister Jones for you. This film originated early pandemic. It was like a few months in and like everybody, we were feeling depressed, sad about the state of the world. We were not feeling great. And then we reached this point where we were kind of bored being stuck inside <laughs> and talking about creating work again and what it meant to be an artist at that moment and started to have a discussion about what was going on with our with ourselves you know our our inner children was coming up a lot in our therapy that we were doing separately um and together <laughs> and uh and and then we thought okay well if we were to make something how could we design it to work within the parameters of the pandemic with all of the health protocols and just from a safety perspective what would actually work and uh, and also what do we want to make and see? So it was an extension of kind of what we were feeling. There was a lot of thematic crossover with the pandemic, even though it's not about the pandemic. You know, it's about the last day on earth and the feelings that come with that. So we'd seen so many, we've seen a lot of films that are chaotic and crazy and violent on, on with that deal with the apocalypse. But because of the pandemic, we were in this kind of like, you know, very almost like banal um, existence of uh, just waiting and there's a lot of fear, but like a lot of just mundane day after day of things just kind of blending together. And so that is kind of where this kind of serene Zen-like quality came from for the film and the concept of, you know, we really wanted to connect with people um, that we weren't able to. And so, okay, like what if you could meet all these friends and people in your final hours, um, people that you, you know, maybe wanted to repair a part of your relationship with or say goodbye to. Um, and so it just kind of spiraled from there or s snowballed from there um, as we were spiraling. <laughs> <laughs> and we just turned all of our existential anxiety uh, and, and even the funny parts of, of what we were feeling during the pandemic into this narrative. So how quickly did this actually come together? Um, because you were trying to take advantage of the pandemic situation at the time. Yeah, it came together fairly quickly. You know, like I would say a few months into pandemic, um, we started conceiving and writing it. And then, you know, only a couple months after that, we started shooting it or in the early summer, and then edited it after that, and then um, submitted it to Sundance by September, and then it was premiered in January. So it was like one of the shortest life cycles uh, for a film that I've worked on. Then, then, then we're curious, what, how many days was this, this shooting schedule? Because you had it work pretty quickly, right? Yeah, it wasn't a traditional schedule where we shot every day because of the nature of the pandemic which made it more difficult. So uh, I would say, I don't know, maybe we shot, I honestly don't even know like the exact answer, but probably something like 15 days or so um, spread out over the course of a month. So if this was, uh, if your shooting schedule was during the summer, so technically, because for my imagination, by watching the film, because there were so many, lack of people and lack of cars you know in the background i thought you you folks actually shot it like in april or something when when there were shutdowns yeah we we started shooting pretty early um and i just i was careful to wait for cars and people to leave the frame um so it helped create an even more isolated feel wow that that is terrific yeah now the thing that's admirable is there are so many, uh, you know, um, stars and guests on in, in this film. Um, you must have uh, called uh, 
went through a Rolodex and called it, called it everybody. Did yeah. you get everyone on your wish list uh, to participate? Almost. Yeah. I would say 90, 95% of the people said yes. And just some were afraid to go outside and work still. Um, but yeah, it was an embarrassment of riches. We were so lucky and fortunate to have worked with so many great people. And normally we never get to have that many amazing actors in one film because they're all busy and tied up with a million things. How, what, what did you, how did you pitch it to them to convince them to get out of their homes? Or was it easy to pitch it to them? Uh, I mean, we told them, look, this is the story. It's going to be small and intimate and really fun. You only have to show up for a few hours. You know, we can come to you or we can provide a location. And most of them were excited to do that because it was the first time they were acting and, and you know, just wanted to do something. How much uh, improv was actually done um, through, uh, through in this film? Because th this is a pretty... Uh, funny movie and you brought in a lot of comedians uh, in, into a movie like this yeah totally I would say like half of it was scripted so like all of Zoe and Kaylee the two lead um, scenes were scripted and the scene between her and her parents played by Helen Hunt and Bradley Whitford's fully scripted a few other scenes were fully scripted and then some were operating off of just an outline and a blueprint of okay this is kind of what we want to hit this is the idea of the scene and who your character is and 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 some some jokes that we're thinking of hitting um and then let the actors kind of play in that area and, and jump into the pool and kind of see if they can swim which they all can swim <laughs> they're very they're very skilled improvisational actors and comedians now zoe and kaylee are throughout most of this film they were wonderful in, in this film could you talk about uh using those two to, uh, th throughout most of the film. Yeah, I mean, Zoe and Kelly, they had such a shorthand and great chemistry because they just had worked together on the craft legacy that came out with Sony and Blumhouse. And um, so they, you know, were um, really good friends and uh, were hanging out a lot during the pandemic. And so Zoe and I were talking about making this and you know, wanted to work with Kaylee and come came up with that concept for her to be the younger self. And it just felt like a natural progression. You know, while I was watching the uh, film, I, I somehow, I always noticed like the, the small little stuff, but I'm, I'm curious about one of Kaylee's outfits. You had her wearing a ripped t-shirt. Was that accidental or was that on purpose? <laughs> we did want it to feel like super worn in, you know, because... You want it to feel like uh, it's, you know, like her younger self, like old t-shirt that she's, you know, an older version of her. Uh, but that was also just a great shirt that Kaylee had and, and we felt like it worked perfectly. <laughs> Some, I don't know, sometimes I, I always notice yeah. these, these little things here, here and there. Totally. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm curious. If you did actually have an inner child yourself, what do you think he would be like? I do have an inner child. <laughs> My little Daryl, he's in there. And he is still, you know, worried and, and wondering if, if everything's going to be okay. And so I try and tell him, you, you're okay, you're safe, you've got this, you've got people who love you. I think that's a good lesson for a lot of people to to pay attention to, you know, when we were kids, so many things happened to you as a child. That's like out of your control. You're still forming your relationship to the world and people and things happen to you that can be traumatic. And so, you know, you carry that weight and that energy. And so I, it is important, I think, for anybody, if they have the wherewithal and, and um, desire to look inward and explore things that had happened to them in the past, and process those feelings, you know, the, the doing inner child work, um, either through journaling or through therapy, psychologically can be really profound and help you have a greater understanding of yourself. That is great. That is great. I'm glad you still have that inner child in, in, in you. As, uh, as people watch uh, this film, one of the things that's, uh, that's actually 
hilarious is that um, Liza walks so much. I, I feel like she walked from like Hollywood to Echo Park or or Silver Lake or something like that. Can can you explain how how does a woman walk so much <laughs> in one day? In a film? It's a it's a it's a recurring joke between Zoe Kelly and I because Zoe wore these heels that you know look good, but she regrets having to wear in every scene. And and Kelly, <laughs> she has such a funny walk. Uh, yeah, we made them walk so much, so she, they were tired. And I think Kelly, especially, not used to walking that much. <laughs> Uh, you know, they just had to do it. I I, I think this film is uh, hilarious. Well, I, let me leave with uh, one more thought because this film was, uh, you know, even though it's about the end of the world, it was, and it was filmed during the pandemic. And we, you and I, all of us lived through this pandemic. I, no, no, no exceptions for anybody. But yeah. for you, Daryl, during those 18 months, or, or some of us were still in this pandemic, how are you still staying sane and creative during this entire time? You know, I don't know that I'm sane. I, I think I'm still struggling. I, I'm working on it though, you know, and uh, I, I did it through this film, to be honest, like working on a project is so gratifying and helps me to stay grounded. And as an artist, you know, there's such instability and you always feel so unstable without knowing like what's going to happen next where your money's going to come from so i try and make films as a framework for how to like live my life like steadily um and you know i think you know a lot of um friends and family communication and connection helped get through this last year and that's what this film is about you know it's about connecting with yourself and with other people and you know, making sure you don't take those those um, people for granted in your life and all those amazing um, people and things that normally in everyday life, places you go to and the freedom that we all have, you know, we really saw what toll that took on us and how we have to really appreciate each other and, and, and this earth uh, if we're all gonna survive moving forward. And that's why we have films like uh, How It Ends for us to all enjoy. Well, Daryl, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for making this film. This this is a terrific film, and everyone should actually watch it. Oh, thank, you thank, for, you. thank you for speaking to us. Hopefully, we get to do this again. Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.